Welcome to M2. In this video we're looking at centres of mass of standard uniform plane laminates. Now, if an object has one dimension very small compared with its other two, for example, its thickness is very small compared to its length and width, then it can be modelled as a laminar. So we kind of essentially regarding it as a 2D shape with area but no volume. And a uniform lamina or uniform plane lamina will have its mass spread evenly throughout its area. It's worth also noting that if the uniform lamina has an axis of symmetry, then the center of mass must lie on that axis of symmetry. If it has more than one, then it must lie at the intersection of them. For example, if I had a circle, then all my lines of symmetry will go through that center point of the circle. Yeah? That must mean that the center of the circle must also be my center of mass, which we often refer to as capital G. If I had a rectangle, I've got two lines of symmetry. Apologies for my poor lines here. Therefore, where they intersect will be its centre of mass. So shapes like this should be quite straightforward and a bit obvious, really. Now, with a triangle, if it's isosceles, it would have one line of symmetry if it was equilateral it obviously have three lines of symmetry but with a isosceles we also look uh, sorry with a triangle we are kind of also always talking about these median lines so within a triangle slightly different there's going to be three median lines and where they meet is going to be our center of mass now in an isosceles triangle one of those median lines would also be a line of symmetry and in an equilateral triangle all three would be. In this case G would simply be the point where my x values or the average x value and the average y value. Now the only shape left to kind of consider or think about for this is a sector. So apologize for my drawing first. But if I have a sector with just total angle is two alpha, G will lie on this line of symmetry. Obviously you have two radiuses here. And the center of that point G will lie on that line of symmetry and its distance will be 2r sine alpha over 3 alpha from the center. And this must be in radians. So let's uh, jump into a couple of examples. Now, for this example, what I'm going to do is a very quick sketch. So it's a semicircle going to have radius of four centimeters and obviously this is going to be 90 the total angle here is going to be 180 degrees remember 180 degrees is pi radians and then G it's going to be somewhere on this line Let's call it A, B, and C to make it a little bit easier. And let's look for this O, G, which is going to be our like mean Y. So a formula for Y is 2R sine alpha over 3 alpha. Now, in the original diagram for this, the total angle was 2 alpha. So in this case, 2 alpha is equal to pi, so alpha is pi by 2. 
So we get 2 times 4, sine pi by 2 over 3 lots of pi by 2. Therefore, the centre of mass of the lamina is on the line OC at a distance 16 over 3 pi from O. So for this one, it's just about essentially the average X and the average Y. So it's about adding up my X values and dividing by how many I've got and adding up my Y values and dividing by how many I've got. So that gives me 8A over 3 for X, 9A over 3 for Y. I'll simplify, so 8a over 3 and 3a. Now for this one, um, first I'm going to make this triangle a bit bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to think about some, essentially, um, these median lines that we were talking about. Or in this case, they are lines of um, symmetry. So they go through a vertex and then they go through the midpoint of the line that's opposite them. Like so. So that's just to give you a little example. Now, what I'm actually going to do is just look at this in terms of this part as a triangle. So let's do this one a little bit thicker here so that hopefully you can see it nice and clearly where I'm kind of looking at. So it's going to hit here at 90 degrees. This is going to be two centimeters because it's the midpoint. And then in terms of this angle, so um, an equilateral triangle has angles which are 60 degrees or pi by 3. This angle is going to be half that, 30 degrees, which will be pi by 6. So pi by 6. Yeah. In this particular question, it doesn't matter whether you use radians or degrees. But I will stick with radians as these types of questions we do normally need radians for. Now I want to find this point here and I want to show it the distance from B. So I'm looking to find essentially this distance here which I'll just call little d. 
So looking at my right angled triangle and thinking about trigonometry, I can say that opposite the angle is O, opposite the right angle hypotenuse, and then my remaining inside is the adjacent. So that means we've got A, and we want to find H. So A and H here is um, cos. Cos theta is A over H. So this is cos pi by 6 is 2 over my D. So my D is 2 over cos pi by 6, which is 4 root 3 over 3. as required. Now, obviously, it only wants us to find the distance from B, but if we needed to, we could also find this distance here from the line BC, um, and so on. So we can kind of find any of these distances, like any one we want, from any direction, just about setting up the triangles. Hopefully you found this one useful. Um, centres and mass for M2 is quite a challenging um, part of the course, so I am making a video on each part as it builds up towards the, the harder aspects of it. Um, so, you know, if you, you've enjoyed this video, hit a like, feel free to comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and, you know, if you are waiting for these videos, just hit the bell icon so you get notified every time one drops. I am aiming to make at least one a day, maybe some days I'll try to make two to get this sent as a mass unit done, as I do know it is one of the more challenging ones within M2 and I have had quite a few uh, requests for this.